Yeah, I'm reminded of a song this morning. Of course, we're not going to sing this song, but my, my brother Larry over here reminded me of this song. And you go, though, though none go with me, still I will follow. Yeah. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. No turning back. Amen. No turning back. Are you determined to worship God this morning, to follow him? Whatever happens, whatever's taken away. You know, I wish I could tell you that the Christianity we've learned of all, everything coming up smelling like roses was true, but it's not. And all you have to do is look at the apostles. Every one of them, except one, was, was killed for the gospel's sake. And it's not that God's a mean God. It's not that that's what his destiny is for you. But we are to live as one that is already crucified with Christ. Amen? And then you know what? When good things happen, man, you're going to worship God, but you're also going to worship him when the bad things happen. Come on, stand up and bless our God. He's so good. He's so, oh, that's weak. Come on, Jesus is here. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
lift you higher. You are the only King forever, forevermore. You are victorious. You are the only King forever. Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only King. so good. He's so wonderful. He's so right. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, 
soul on fire, Lord. I'm longing for your ways. I'm waiting for the day. Till I am a soul on fire. Till I am a soul. So good, Lord. You are so good, Lord. You know, I don't mean to embarrass you, Larry, but y'all need to know our brother here and what's happening. He's he's got cancer. He's had an operation and he's got these tubes in him, and, and now they're about to give him chemotherapy. He's facing some really I mean, if you think you had problems, speak to my brother Larry. But his faith is not in the doctors. It's not in the ability for them to heal. His faith is not in his own body because his body has already let him down, you know. His faith is in the Lord God Almighty. But, you know, he needs you. He needs you and he needs us. How many in here will will make a, let's say, a pact with God that God would put him on your heart anytime, day or night? Come on, can I see your hands? Can we join that? That you intercede for Larry when he needs you the most? Or maybe when you're just driving and you just think about him. You may not even remember his name. His name's Larry, but that's okay. You can say that brother in church. You know, that's we need the Holy Spirit. He's the one who's getting Larry through this. And I, I picked up another brother in the car who's I was taking the Moffat and he was in pain. He couldn't even get to church. And, he was just telling me how discouraged he was. And I just told him, I said, you know, in the midst of that, you got to worship God. And it was a new thing for him. And I said, you know, that's the, that's the cure for the pain that you're in. You know, because when you worship God, he comes and dwells in the midst of your praise. So whatever you're going through today, when you worship him through it, first of all, that's a sweet fragrance before his throne. I want to put a smile on his face. But more than that, he comes in tabernacles. He comes and rests right in your situation. Isn't that awesome to think that the Almighty God is coming into your situation because you worshiped him? But you know, beyond all that, he's worth it. He's worthy. And that's what my brother was saying, you know. This isn't the Christianity he was taught because that Christianity doesn't exist. That's, that's a fairy tale. The Christianity is though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And there's two key words there, through, through. God doesn't take you out of it. He walks through it. He takes you through it. He said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will be with you. Amen. That's it. God Almighty is walking with you.
Continue that whole song a little bit. That's the worship part of it. And here's how we do this. And this is very difficult for me because early on, you know, raising the hands and all that, it's kind of a girly man thing, right? But here's the deal. I found there's incredible liberty in humbling yourself before your master because there's no amount of testosterone that's going to impress him, no amount of money. It's about a condition of your heart. Amen? So let's just worship him just a little bit more. Is that okay? Same song. Jesus. You want to sing that one or sing the Holy Spirit? Let's sing the Holy Spirit and I'll get into that. Praise God. Go ahead, sing it again, Lauren. Praise God. praise you, Father. Hallelujah. We glorify the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We glorify the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Lord. I worship you. I praise you. I worship you and glorify your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, we live every day in a, in a, in a world that has a very worldview of all the politics and media. It's so nice to escape and come to a place of truth, a place of peace, a place of restoration. Amen. 
That's what this is about. It's about restoration. It's about truth. It's about, it's about looking at the one who can get us through it all. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Well, today, as it's our custom here at New Hope, is we celebrate the Lord's Supper, the communion, the taking of the elements. And, and the Word has some instructions for us. I'm going to touch on it briefly out of 1 Corinthians. And basically, it, 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 it talks about before we partake as, as members of the body of Christ, that we examine ourselves and let each one eat of the bread and drink of the cup. But if we drink in an unworthy manner, there's consequences for that. And, and, and the point of this is, is simply this. We're recognizing the, the covenant, the blood covenant that Jesus Christ has established to save you and to save me. And it's good that we, before we partake of that all-important time, that we take time to examine ourselves. One of my big fathers of the faith, a man by the name of C.H. Spurgeon, said that we always ought to keep short accounts with God. And what that simply means is when you screw up, don't wait till Sunday to ask for forgiveness. Like, do it right now. And I've tried to get this down to a science where I can lose my temper on 19, and within 30 seconds, I'm asking for forgiveness and praying for that person and praying for me because that person's going on their merry way. They didn't even know they messed up my day. But the devil will use that to mess up your day. And you're getting your day messed up by someone who don't even know you exist. So we just can't do that. So basically what we want to do, what I'd like you to do just for a moment, is I want you to, because we, have to, I want, we celebrate Easter, we celebrate Christmas. Every month we get to celebrate the Lord's Supper. And that's a huge thing, folks. It's a huge privilege in the body of Christ. So I'd like you to do just for a moment, I want you to think of yourself before you came to know Jesus Christ. Remember that person. Remember that person before you came to Christ. Might not have been too cool of a person, huh? Now I want you to remember the day you did give your life to Christ. Amen? Remember that day and look at the change. Now I want you to remember just for a moment the one, this one thing, or maybe two things, the one thing that you have seen that God absolutely miraculously answered a prayer or moved in your life, and it just it was nothing but God. It had to be God. God answered that prayer. God did this. Now I want you to remember as we go into communion just for a moment that God, that same God that saved you, that same God that answered that prayer and worked that miracle, and you know in your heart of hearts whether no one else believes it or not that God did it, that same God will do it again for you. He will do it again for you. He will do it again for you. He will do it again. And how many people here need for God to do something again? Amen? So that's what this is about. So we're going to pray, and, and I want to take just a moment. I've spent most of my adult life in ministry and teaching and Bible study and that. And I want to share something with you that... I'm going to share the most profound bit of theology that I can. And how many people are ready for something really deep that you just can't forget? You ready for this? I want you to remember this. And I want you to join me if you know the same theology. Because this is at the end of the day. This is all you need to know. You ready for this? This is after 40 years of study. Join in if you know it. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Praise God. Hallelujah. There you have it. I just saved you 40 years of study. It's like, but you know what? There's going to be times in your life, and I do believe this, 
you don't know what to do or what to say or where to go. And I would just encourage you to sing that simple song that everybody here just sang because that's the absolute final truth. Jesus loves you, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Amen? Amen. Well, let's pray before we uh, hand out the elements here in just a moment. And Pastor John will continue to lead us in praise and worship. And the prayer of examination, and I, I prayed this last night, and I'm not gonna, I haven't gotten that much trouble since last night, so I don't want to belabor that. But, you know, I asked the Lord to forgive me for being an idiot probably five or ten times a day. And that's not because I'm out committing heinous sins, it's just because I, I think the wrong thoughts or say the wrong words or I'm not as forgiving as I should be or maybe I'm harsh with my wife and I shouldn't be. And, and, there, and there's... And you're always dealing with pride and lust. I'll just pray, Father, this is for me. But I want you to also pray because each one here has their own recipe and wheelhouse that you're living in. And not everything is going according, perhaps perfectly, to God's will in your life. So how do you do this? Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. And Lord, you, I acknowledge Jesus Christ is my Lord. He is my Savior. By his stripes I am healed. His precious blood has saved me. The Lord, forgive me. Forgive me of anger. Forgive me of unforgiveness. Forgive me for simply not trusting you as I should. Forgive me, Father God, of committing sins that I knew better than to do. And forgive me, for Father, for doing nothing when I should have done something. Lord, give me wisdom. Give me grace. Forgive me, Father. And help me to be a better, a better person in your kingdom. Help me to be the salt and the light of the earth and to represent you as I should. Change me, Father. Make me into the person you would have me to be. Lord, I just give this all to you and ask, please forgive me. And let us be totally reconciled this day. And we give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, ushers, would you please come up and we'll hand out the elements. Ushers, please. pierced for our transgressions crushed for our sins the punishment that brought us peace was upon him and by his wounds by his wounds we are healed he was pierced for our transgressions Crushed for our sins, the punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds, by his wounds we are healed. We are healed by your sacrifice and the life. Transgressions crushed for our sin. Punishment that brought us peace was upon him. By his wounds, by his wounds, we are He 
us peace for our transgressions, crushed for our sin. The punishment that brought us peace was upon Him. And by His wounds, by His wounds we are healed. Transgressions, crushed for our sin. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. By his wounds, by his wounds we are healed. We'll claim it today. talking about here? Is he talking about you today? Lift your hands and thank him. Thank you for your healing, Lord. Thank you for your healing. That's physically, that's mentally and emotionally, that's spiritually. Thank you, thank you for your healing. By your wounds, by your wounds, we are healed, Thanks. 
He broke it and said, Take, eat this. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, we do indeed remember you and we know you. And I pray that we would each one come to know you better and more intimately and more truly each and every day. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for the price that you paid. And Lord, thank you for reconciling us with you, that you are in us and we are in you forever and ever. Let's partake together. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, we remember you, and we thank you, and we honor this covenant. We are true to you. Our faith is in you. We love you. We follow you. We obey you. And Lord, you order our steps. You straighten our paths. And Lord God, you will get us through the mountaintops and through the valleys and everything in between because you are Jesus Christ, our Lord. And let's partake of this together in remembrance of our Lord and Savior. Heavenly Father, we just continue to praise you. We continue to thank you. I pray, dear Lord, that you would give us soundness of mind, softness of heart, clarity of purpose and understanding. Work healing within our bodies is as needful and necessary. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear and a heart to receive your truth. And Lord God, use us to make a difference somehow, some way. Wherever you've planted us, let us bloom for the glory of Christ. And I just pray you would be well pleased, Father God. You would just order our steps. You would give us guidance. And you'd give us peace and contentment which transcends all understanding. And Father, we are careful to give you the praise and thanks for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, praise him. Praise him. Come on. Praise you, Lord. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, God. I want you to listen to this. This is out of Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah is describing the throne room of heaven. You can stay standing if you would. He's describing the throne room of heaven, this vision that God has given him. And, and he says that there were these seraphim that he saw around the throne. And the word seraphim there in the Hebrew means burning ones. How many burning ones are in here this morning? Amen. And it says that they cried out, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. And listen to this, verse 4. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke, with the glory of God. I've been just meditating on that all week. And if I'm a burning one, my job is to cry holy, amen? And the response in heaven to me declaring the holiness of God is that the temple foundations shake, amen? That the, that the doorposts of, what, of your life shake, that, that whatever it is that you're dealing with is shook at the foundation, amen? As you declare, God, you are holy. Come on, let's declare that this morning. Lord, you are holy. You are holy, God. You are holy, God. There's no one like you, Lord. There's no one like you, Jesus. There's no one like you, Jesus. Come on, worship him, people. Worship him this morning. There's no one like you, Jesus. You are holy, you are holy, you are holy, Lord. You are holy, Jesus. You are holy, Jesus. Lord, we lift up your name above every circumstance, above every trial, above every, every condition that we face, Lord God. We declare, Lord, your name above cancer, Lord God. We declare healing in Larry's body, Lord God. We declare healing in the Bowman's body, Lord God. We declare healing in Pastor's body this morning, Lord. Lord, we declare healing in Tracy's body this morning, God. Lord, you are holy, Lord. You are holy, God. You are holy, God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, God. Amen. Why don't you continue your worship and just love on each other this morning before we're seated. Go ahead and give somebody a hug, a handshake. Look for someone new this morning. 
God, you are good. God, you are good. Thank you, worship team, Pastor John. Amen. I know because of the connect tables, you've had enough sugar to get you really going this morning. Amen. Let's go ahead and find our seats. Praise the Lord. Praise God. How many of you love our worship team? Amen? Amen. And Lauren, where are you? Lauren, where are you? There you are. Great job. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. I mean, y'all do a good job, but this is the first time seeing her up there, so praise the Lord. Woo. Welcome to New Hope Church. It's good to see you all smiling back this morning. How many of you are here for the first time? Your first time here? Put your hands up. It's good to have you. Go ahead and put your hands up nice and high. It's good to see you guys. Amen. Were you given coffee mugs when you came through the door? Okay, great. We call it getting mugged around here, but it's a, it's a good thing. Uh, in, that, in that coffee mug is a Connect card. We just asked you to fill that out um, and just to get to let us know a little bit about yourself. We promise not to harass you or inundate you with things. Our pastor will give you a call this week, and uh, thank you for coming and see how we can stand with you. Amen? Amen. There's so much going on today. The first thing, as you came through, did you have a good time trying to make your way into the church as you came through the Connect tables? I want to thank those of you, the couple tables that were carb, low-carb friendly. Thank you very much. Had some ribs this morning, the men's, men's, guy, the men's ministry. I had some, some bacon and cheese quiche over here. It was just great. It was great. So thank you. Amen. One of the things that was out there, um, come on up, Tom, was this. Hopefully you signed up. If you didn't, it's too late. I'm sorry. But uh, they're giving away three Bibles, three, three life application study Bibles, leather. And it's the NLT, which pastor is now using the NLT now. And uh, we're going to go ahead and draw three names this morning. Your hand's up in faith back there, isn't it? <laughs> So we're going to go ahead and draw three names. I promise my name is not in here. None of my family is in here. Okay, the first name, Lauren Bancroft. Come on up. Come get your Bible. Wow. You want to give it to her? You can give it to her. Go ahead. There we go. Okay, the next name. Isabella Courtney. Bella. Whoa. Awesome. That is awesome. <laughs> and isn't she rocking the new hairstyle? Isn't that awesome? That's awesome. I was uh, telling one of our teenagers this week, I have life application Bibles, and uh, it's my favorite study Bible. It's just awesome. Gina Courtney. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. 
There we go. Which just goes to show if Pastor John would pray harder, he could have got one of these. <laughs> All right, thank you. Yeah, we do. So see us afterwards. All right, great. Awesome. Praise God. Woo! So I do want to encourage you to make your way back after. If you got to church late and didn't have a chance to uh, stop at the Connect tables or see them all, go ahead and stop by and see what, what's happening. And all of these start at the end of September, correct? What was that? Okay, now, some, some are in the next few weeks. Yeah, so if you signed up, if you signed up, you'll get information. So that's right. The men just keep going. Matter of fact, men, matter of fact, let me challenge you, all right? A couple uh, months ago, I preached a message on uh, the circus. Remember, how many of you remember that? You know, the boy in the circus? And the, the kicker to the whole thing was if you want to really experience the circus, you've got to get as close as you can. And to get closer, it's going to cost you. It's going to take time. It might take effort. It might take finances. And uh, just to tie in with Isaiah 6, if you really want to be a burning one, if that's the cry of your heart as a husband, as a, just a man, as an individual, um, uh, you know what? It, it takes getting away from the usual to do that. And I want to challenge you today. We've got a lot of men in this church, and we have a men's retreat coming up next weekend. And God is calling us out into the woods for a time of just getting away from it all. The best thing you could do, the thing I've always said over the last 25 years in ministry, especially as a youth pastor, was the best thing I could do for the teenagers is get them away from home sometimes. And guys, the best thing we could do for you is to get you away from home for the weekend. Get you away from your normal routine. Get you away from uh, voices speaking into your ear constantly over the weekend. I'm, wives, I'm not... You know, I'm just saying, I'm saying it's, it's good. We got a section over here today. I don't know. But listen, we have an opportunity, all right? We have, I think, about 10 spots left right now um, for the men's retreat. And we want to see all of you come into all of who you are in Christ. We're going to be talking about uh, bearing the marks of Jesus out of Galatians chapter 6 uh, this weekend. Uh, it was supposed to be uh, Wayne Deary was going to join us, but because of some emergencies that have come up, I mean, he had to leave early for, for Africa. Pastor Ken Hope is actually going to be ministering over the weekend. And if you don't know who that is, uh, he is the one who comes and helps us with worship on the third Thursday of every month uh, in, uh, over at the Thursday night prayer meetings. And uh, he was my pastor and youth pastor for years and years, and such a tremendous, tremendous minister of the gospel, and you will not be disappointed. So, man, I want to challenge you right now to pick up a Connect card, put your information down there, and put Men's Retreat. Listen, it's $150. It's going to cost you. But that covers your, someone said, ouch. That's an investment. Some of you drop $100 on, you know, golf club, $300 on a pair of shoes, you know what I'm saying? It's an investment in your relationship with the Lord. And it's an investment in your relationship with your spouse if you're married. It's an investment in your relationship with your kids because you're going to come away stronger than when you go into it. Amen? Listen, God had to get Moses to the desert. It took him 40 years. We're just asking for three days, okay? <laughs> All right, if, if you're saying, well, there's excuses you have. Well, I'm supposed to mow the lawn this weekend. I'm sure your wife won't mind mowing the lawn. Seriously, right? Or you can pay the neighbor kid 20 bucks to do it. You know, oh, well, I've got to do this this weekend. I've got to do that. I want to wash it. I'm supposed to go out in the boat with the family this weekend. No, no. Just put it aside. Friday night, all day Saturday, we come back. Uh, we end at 1130 on Sunday. You'll be back early Sunday afternoon. And uh, we want you to be a part of this. Amen? Amen. The ladies are agreeing. Amen? Amen. 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 All right. So fill out a Connect card and you drop that in the, uh, the offering as you come by. And uh, we'll see what, what happens. It's going to be a good time. I'm really looking forward to it. Right, Steve? Yes, Amen. All right. Tomorrow, Labor Day picnic. Tomorrow's Labor Day. You get to come and enjoy free hamburgers and hot dogs. We ask you to bring a side dish if you can. We're going to have the cornhole tournament again. woo right? Try to knock the Kaplans off the, off the pedestal, off the throne, you know? Um, we got some new trophies this year. I mean, this, this time around this picnic, they're a little bit bigger because I anticipate winning. And um, 
we'll see what happens, all right? So uh, Cornhole Tournament, it's going to be two people, teams. Um, it's going to be from 11 o'clock to 3 o'clock, the whole picnic. Uh, I was, I've been watching the news, and it doesn't look like the rain's supposed to happen until tomorrow afternoon later. So, so it should be good. That's according to Dennis Phillips on ABC. He's the man closest to heaven out of all the weather guys in the area. No. Um, so we want you to come out and be a part of that. There is a sign-up sheet located at the connection table if you want to let us know what you plan on bringing. Amen? Um, also, again, the, the fall kickoff this weekend for Connect Group. Stop by the, the table out there. Uh, we do have another missions com trip coming up in just about six weeks, going to the DR. How many of you going on the trip? Yeah, all right. And they are packing gift bags for about 200 children uh, to hand out during VBS and 100 bags for women to, to hand out as they minister at the Women's Conference. Um, and they're asking for donations. So look on the bulletin, the back of the bulletin, you can see what is needed. Amen. I think that's it. Also, the Global Impact Conference is coming up. I am really, really excited about this. Um, you're going to be amazed, first, at what the sanctuary is going to look like, but also you're going to be amazed at the message that's going to be preached that weekend. Uh, Carlos Sarmiento is the uh, founder and director of Orlando House of Prayer. He's an international evangelist, travels all over the place and speaks as well. He's going to be our guest speaker uh, that weekend. Uh, we are going to have the Saturday brunch. Saturday afternoon at about 1 o'clock, we're actually going to have a one-hour session on how to share your testimony in 30 seconds or less. And uh, that's by the Dragons, right? And uh, they're going to be sharing with us. That's Pam Spidell's brother and his wife, and they're going to be sharing, they have a little workshop, and then we're bringing them back um, in a couple months to do a whole weekend with us on, on that and some other things. So I want to encourage you to be a part of that. Also, uh, we are going to have the Saturday evening service, Sunday morning. After Saturday night, we're going to have the decadent dessert uh, time of fellowship that we always have and some finger foods, and then we're going to have our international banquet uh, on Sunday. We encourage you to to bring foods from your ethnic heritage, which is going to be a lot of fun. So uh, it's going to be a great time. And then Sunday night, we're coming back at 6 o'clock, and we're going to have a time of intercession and worship for the nations. And Carlos is going to be doing a, a, some teaching on how to pray for missionaries and how to pray for the nations. And then our worship team, uh, the OHOP worship team, is going to be with him, and we're going to do, the, um, we're going to do a, a time of intercession and prayer for the nations. Amen? So it's going to be a good time. I think that's everything except for offering. Yeah, so why don't we go ahead and prepare ourselves to, to receive the tithe and offering this morning. And if you, uh, I know that Tracy and I, we always give on the church app. You can also give online if you're watching from home. Uh, but there's plenty of different ways you can give. Uh, the whole encouragement is just to be faithful in your giving, to, to honor what God has asked us of him. Amen. So praise God. Guys, why don't you come on down and um, we'll just prepare ourselves to receive. Amen. Here they come. All right. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are our provider. Lord, even in the lean times, Lord, you bring provision. You put food on our tables. You take, help us take care of our bills, Lord. You, you provide for us, Lord. And, Lord, I know, Lord, that's because we walk in obedience. Lord, I, I know that's because, Lord God, uh, you are the source of all things, Lord. Lord, that truly we can do more than, than enough with the 90% when you ask us for the 10 so, Lord, tonight or this morning, we give it obediently. We give it as an act of worship, and we surrender ourselves to you. It's in your precious name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Pastor Karen. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. How is everybody? Peachy, orangey. Wasn't this morning in the worship just really sweet? Yeah, go, yes. Give him glory. Give him honor. He, oh, it was amazing, and, and the Holy Spirit is so sweet how he ties everything in and prepares our heart. Father, we just take a minute right now. Holy Spirit, we know that you are here. We know that you are present. I give myself to you as a vessel, and I say not my words, but your words. I ask for each person in the room, Holy Spirit, that you tailor what it is that they need through what it is that you are going to speak. We want you and only you to receive all the glory and all the honor. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Okay, well, sermon titles are not my favorite thing to come up with. I struggle with that. And for so whatever reason, this time, my sermon title I came up with was How to Live Victoriously. And I thought, isn't that just catchy? 
And it reminded me, though, as I started, how it can often sound like those self-help books, you know, what to do. And, and some of you might think, oh, great, I'm going to get six tips on how to walk out of here and be successful. So just to be kind of goofy like I can be, I looked up self-help books. And there are some on the market, one that said the four-hour work week. I know. If I could figure out how to work for I'm in too, right? And no, I did not buy any of these books. The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. The Power of Now. Okay, and this is, this is one that will really trip you up a little bit. Wherever you go, there you are. Isn't that deep? That's deep. Okay. And then there's a category on Amazon called Best Sellers and Happiness. Aww. All you got to do is buy a book for $9.99, and with Prime, you get it in two days, and you'll be happy. One said, make your bed. Does that work for you? Do you get happy when you make your bed? I'm not even going to ask who makes their bed. And then if that didn't make you happy, there's the book of joy. And then there was one called, what is your clutter telling you? That there's green mold crawling under, climbing or growing underneath this paper. You best clean the desk. Okay? And the list went on and on and on. I thought, you know, Lord, it's interesting. There's so many people out there, so many books, and everybody is looking for something and sometimes someone to make them happy, to make them joyful, to fulfill a need. All of us have this hole there, and the only person that can fill that is Jesus Christ himself. And yet there's so many people that are searching and searching. And the really sad thing I came across the other day, there was a a request I received from somebody asking for Christian mysticism. I'm like, really, Lord? Christian mysticism? How messed up are we getting? And yet that's the world that we live in. And we know, those of us sitting in this room, we have the truth. We know the truth. And we know the only book that we need to succeed in life is his word. The Bible, believers' instructions for living on earth. If there's something you need to know, this is where you need to go. Now, I'm not saying there aren't other books or other tools. There are some amazing Christian authors out there, and there are even some business books that are good. And if you really look at it, often the business principles, where do you think they come from? Because I used to, you know, having worked in sales and marketing and did a lot of things in my past, I, once I became saved and committed to the Lord, I was like, huh, we talked about this over here. Well, really, it's what we talk about over here. So where do you think they're getting it? But this is what we need, and this is where we need to go. And a lot of what came across today, and it's the Holy Spirit all morning, and that's coming around to what I'm saying, is if you have an issue, if you have a problem, as a believer, the first place you should go to is his word. His promise. If you're struggling with something, you find the promise, and where are you going to focus? If you focus on the problem, what's going to happen? It's going to get bigger. It's going to get worse. You're going to get depressed. You're going to get sad. You're not going to come to church because I don't want to be at church. Life is so rough right now. Where should you be? And I commend you. Larry was here last night. He's here again today. He needs the encouragement. What does Satan want to do? He wants to isolate us and keep us at home. Because I don't feel good. I'm not going to go to church. Duh. When you don't feel good, where should you go? Even when you feel good, you should be in church too. And it doesn't matter. I remember in the beginning when I first, you know, after my husband died and I was a mess, I went to church every time the doors were open and I sat near the back and I just sat there and cried. Now, I had some looks. She's nuts. I didn't care. Because whatever was in there, I didn't get it. I didn't understand it. But I knew I needed to be there. The worst thing I could have done is stay at home and cry. Because then I would have continued in the lifestyle I had. But I didn't want that. I didn't know what he was going to do or how he was going to do it. But I needed to know. I, need, I knew I had to be in church. So what are you facing? You heard it this morning. What are you facing? What are you going through? What promise are you standing on? What does God say? You have some money issues? 
Struggling a little bit there? Oh, well, God says, I will provide everything you need. You got a bill sitting there? You don't know how you're going to pay it? Rejoice. Hallelujah. God, I cannot wait to see how you're going to pay that bill. Hallelujah for the opportunity for glory to shine through me. Okay, now you might not be that excited, but still say his word. Okay, God, I don't really don't like this, but I know your word says you shall provide everything I need according to your riches and glory. It's not how we say it. It's what we say. We cannot go by what we see, by what we think, or what we feel. That will get us in trouble every time. I don't know how you men are, but I know sometimes ladies, you know, we're feeling a little blue. We want to put on that song. And, you know, why does my dog not bark when you come around? I'm not a country person. Yeah, think about that one for a minute. Okay. When you're feeling that way and you put that stuff on, you're going to stay in that place. Feelings are real. We just can't follow them. So when you're feeling down, you heard it. Put on a praise song. Put on a worship song. And in the, my days of the, all the sales and all that kind of stuff back then, one thing I heard in a seminar was sing in the shower in the morning. There are some days I will hum because that's all I can get out. And I make up my words to my own song. I love what we sing here with the words, but I can tell you, I don't remember most of those words. It doesn't say, it says, make a joyful noise. Make it up. Because you're by yourself. Who cares? But it puts a smile on his face. And what it's going to do to your spirit, it's going to pick you up. A couple weeks ago, I had just a dark... I know where it came from. I know why. You know, we can all say we know the enemy's out there. He's come to steal, kill, and destroy. But you know what? He's a liar, and he's defeated. So big whoop. But in that, I still had that darkness. I'm like, oh, really? The thoughts I had, the thoughts towards people I had, the thoughts I had about myself. And I knew. You ever, you're like, you know, and you see, and you're kind of watching yourself, and you're like, oh, this is awful. Well, and I knew what to do. Couldn't really go get my Bible because I don't have the energy to get up to go do that. But I knew. Okay, I know. And Thomas said, right. Jesus, you love me. Sometimes that's all you can get out. The joy of the Lord is my strength. (sighs) Speak the word. You don't have to be joyful when you say it because I wasn't feeling joyful. God, you have a purpose and a plan. I don't get it. It really stings, but you have a plan. Okay, fine. Sorry, I'm being real. (laughs) Think we're always joyful? No. And it took a day, you know, it was just kind of quiet throughout the day. And, and just, you know, I still had the songs I played. I still, you know, turned, played them lower. I want to hear that. Jesus! You know, went in the mood, part a little. But I played it. Sorry, I admit it. The next day, I felt a little bit better. You know, take captive those thoughts in the name of Jesus. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. <sighs> Fine. The third day, I was back to myself. Okay, we all go through it. And we're going to do a little exercise because we hear that scripture, take captive that thought. You ever try to grab it? And, you know, you ever think, what does that really mean? So to yourself, I want you to count to ten. Now say your name out loud. What happened to the counting? Simple. You have to speak the word out loud. You can't just think it in your head. You speak his word, and that thought will stop. That's how you take that captive. So my title isn't even on the screen, right? Okay. So I don't really know where we're going to head because I'm just kind of all over. Actually, I want to go to Genesis 12, 1 to 3. I don't even know if anybody's up there. And Hey, I got my Bible. Let's do it the old-fashioned way. I like that, the old-fashioned way. Turn the pages. 
gosh, I get tired of the phone and all that, the apps. All right. Can I see it, though? Okay. The call of Abram, 12, verse 1. Oh, Ken, I'm so sorry. Small group leaders will do it at the end, okay? It's funny how you think of things. All right. The Lord had said to Abram, and I want to stop right there for a minute. The Lord had said to Abram. He spoke to Abram. He spoke. God speaks. God is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. If he did it back then, he does it today. He speaks. Now, granted, I think we have it better off today because we have the Holy Spirit. And I was so pleased today. We invited the Holy Spirit. We talked about the Holy Spirit because I don't think we necessarily teach enough on who he is. But he is part of the Trinity. You got God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. He's not an it. He's not somebody like, oh, oops, he's here. He's a he. He's a person. And Jesus sent him. Jesus had to go away so he could send him. He's our advocate. Read through John. He's our advocate. He's our comforter. He teaches us and he guides us. Build that relationship with him. You don't know what to do? Holy Spirit, what do you think? Talk to him. I hope it's not just me. I have these conversations all the time. And call me crazy, but I'm like, all right, Holy Spirit, what looks better today? It's every area of my life. If he knows how many hairs are on my head, and if he knows if a hair falls, he's going to help me get dressed. Okay. The Holy Spirit is there. And we have to learn, just like babies. In the natural, babies are born. Babies don't come out and say, give me the car key. Yo, high five. I'm out of here. I use a baby as an example often because in the natural, a baby is born and then has to grow and learn and they start walking. You know, they crawl. What do they do? They roll over, they crawl, they start walking. And in all that, they don't always roll perfectly the first time. They don't always take their first step the right way. They take a step and fall down. And do they lay down? What happens? Get up. Isn't that something? Spiritually, we're born. We're born again in our spirit. God's spirit comes to reside and live inside us. Ponder that over lunch today. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is the same spirit that lives in us if we have asked Jesus to be our Lord and Savior. That's power. But do I, I'm saved today, tomorrow, do I know how to believe and do and walk in everything? No. No. I have to learn. Hence, the Holy Spirit is there to teach us. You come to church to learn and and to grow and to, you know, be encouraged so you can go back out there. And you don't come in here to sit just to learn to get full and fat, but you come in here to learn and to get encouraged and be in this kind of worship. I love worshiping in my home, but there is something different when I come in here and worship collectively with my brothers and my sisters. So now I'm ready. I'm ready to face. And he fills us so we can go out and tell others. Remember those self-help books? The list? People are looking because they're looking for something. People, cults have come about. Gangs have come about because people want somewhere to belong. I think we're a pretty cool group to belong to. So we come here and we learn. 30-second testimony, how awesome. We should all be in that. How can I share who he is? And often we share more by our actions and not our words. Another issue for another day, but how are you really living? How are you in work? Are you on time? Are you punctual? Are you doing what you're supposed to do? Because I'm telling you, as soon as somebody knows you're a believer, they're watching you. Did he take a pen home? It's silly. It is true. We're supposed to start work at 8, and it's like 8 o'clock, and they show up, and it's 8.25, and they're just now starting to work because they're all these things matter. So we come in here. It's safe. We can learn. We can grow. We were challenged. Raise our hand. Do something different. Take that step. In the spiritual, we're growing. We're learning. So you're not going to get it right all the time. I did, you know, Holy Spirit, I think you're telling me this, so I'm going to do it, but if you're not, please stop. Are we sure? Are we sure? So then I'll take that step, 
<gasps> he's really, yeah, I'm supposed to do this, and that's so cool. <laughs> or, oh, oh, I think I missed this one. And did God, is God up there going, ah, psh, you blew it. I told you to go right, not left. Is that what he's doing? No. What did you do when you're kids or you see somebody fall? What do you do? Yeah, you encourage them. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. And the Holy Spirits are like, it's okay, you're learning. It's all right. Okay, okay, okay. Brush off and get up and go. As believers, we can never, ever, 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 ever give up. No matter how you feel, you get up. You wake up. And these groups and the connect groups are awesome because it's going to give you a support group. They're safe environments where you can build relationships. You can build friendships. And then when I was in that kind of like little dark moment, I'm like, oh, I don't even have anybody to talk to. You know, one of those days. So I called a friend of mine. We've been friends for over 30 years. I said, hey, I need to talk. I talked for like four minutes, and she kind of took over the rest of the conversation. I was like, I, did, I don't know. I didn't tell her this. I'll tell her, though, in case she ever sees this. But I'm like, Ugh. there she goes. She's talking. I don't even get to talk to her. Okay, I'm just being real. But you know what I realized a few days later when I was out of that? What was me? I just Nobody likes me when I was out of that. As she talked, at one point in the conversation, she's like, You're, it's just amazing what God has done in your life. <sighs> you know, I tell my husband, I tell him, you know, look at what happened with Karen. Look how God did this. Look how God did that. And she rehearsed a few things that here in the past few years have been going on. And at the moment, I was like, mm, yeah, mm, oh, yeah, but not now. Like, yeah, it's whatever. But a few days later, I'm like, God, Look what you're doing. You're faithful. You did do all that. That is so exciting. God, you did do all that. And when you said today during communion, think back what you were like before Christ and think where you are now after you have him in your life and the walk. And the, oh, my word, I wouldn't change it. It is so, excuse us, stinking exciting. You never know what he's going to do, when he's going to do it, and how he's going to do it. Because trust me, I'm a planner. I'm like, God, here's what you should do. I think this works out great. <laughs> he doesn't do it that way. He laughs. You're right, I'll show her. But it's that relationship. And I've spent many a times on the floor, tears, crying, all that kind of stuff, all that gunk coming out of me, saying, God, you change me. I cannot do it. You change me. You say, created me a clean heart. Well, you created me a clean heart. Thomas said, Lord, help me with my unbelief. So help me with my unbelief because I'm not believing so well today. God, you do it because I can't do it. When I struggle with smoking for, gosh, I smoke for, I don't even know how many years anymore. Almost 20 years, like almost three packs a day. I have good, clean pink hearts. I'm healthy, by the way. Praise God. Lungs, not heart. I don't know what color my heart is. Okay. But when I came, like I knew, you came to the Lord and that kind of stuff, and like I just, I just wanted to lay it down. I didn't want to do it. I was Bible school, hiding it, like, ooh, I smoked. How can I smoke? You know, the gum. Everybody. You stink. Sorry, but I'm not trying to hide it. And I sat there, the cigarette in my hand, on my back porch step going, God, you delivered the Israelites from Egypt. Really? You could deliver me from this. I did, I'm sorry, I talked to God like this. <laughs> he made me. A year later. So it took a year. And through that year, I know he told me I had so much else going on. And he was like, it's okay. We'll get there. But we got this and this and this and this. I was falling in love with him. He, I, I was a mess. This was, you know, that first year after my husband had died. And so the day it came, I was going to a conference over in Lakeland, uh, some kind of women's thing. And I'm like, oh, it's going to be it. My last cigarette. I'm going to quit. So I had one cigarette, and I was going to go to the car, and had my one cigarette, and a I would 
to go? I'm like, really? <laughs> My one last cigarette? You want to be there with me? I smoked that cigarette, and I was done. He did it. It's not microwave religion. It's not drive through religion. But I had to keep saying, keep believing, and keep believing, and keep believing, and keep believing, and keep believing. God, you did this then. You're going to do it now. And that's what he wants us to do. It's so simple. Just believe. And our actions will follow whatever we believe. Get his word in you. You've got many, many Bible studies here to be a part of. You've got Pastor Nick preaching, does a phenomenal job in teaching us the word. It's on, you know, if you miss it, it's on YouTube. If you want to hear it again, it's on YouTube or go to the website. There are other preachers out there. Today in our time and the technology, there is no excuse for us not to know the word and no excuse for us not to know how to access the word. There's a Bible app. They'll send you devotions. They'll send you, there's everything. If you're battling depression, Google Bible scriptures on depression. Bing, you get a whole list. Bible scriptures on healing. Bing, there's a whole list. Print them out, save them, say them, say them, say them, say them. Speak it over your life. And I heard somewhere today in the talk of being aware, being aware of what we say, what we think. And we, with each other, have to keep each other accountable. And I've told you this before, and I'll tell you again. If you ever hear me saying anything over my life, like, oh, my foot hurts, or, oh, I don't know how this is going to happen. Oh, I don't know how God's going to do this, or I'm really scared. Stop me. I don't want to speak that over my life. The Word tells us that the words we speak have the power of life or death. So are you going to bless your life, or are you going to curse your life? And people struggle with it. I had one friend a while back, you know, shortly in all my enthusiasm, I'm like, you're so positive. Like, well, I want to be. And it's not me, it's him. And again, if we rehearse what he has brought us through is amazing. And that was just the Lord said to Abram. We didn't get very far, did we? <sighs> I'm not getting as far today as I got last night, am I? <laughs> I have like 20 slides. Oh, hey, look. All right, real quick. He said, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. The Lord, he will lead you. He will guide you. But often he is telling us you have to lead the things that are hindering you from his purpose. It's hard. A, go through your house. Holy Spirit, what's in my house that should not be here? B, Holy Spirit, who is in my life that should not be here? If you got people in your life that are not encouraging you, speaking his truth into your life, I want to know why are they in your life? Now, I know we need people in our life that we are pouring into, but there's a difference to those that we're in relationship with. Holy Spirit, is this good or do you want me to do this? And I'm going to challenge you as you're learning this, It's okay. God knows you're learning and you're growing. It's okay to say, Holy Spirit, should I do X, Y, Z? And if you hear a yes or a no, you trust that. Trust that because he knows your heart. The first time I was leaving my um, job and going from a great job benefits, you know, going to making less than a quarter, I knew that I knew that I knew that it was the Lord, a whole other story but when it was aware, like, oh, I wanted, I'm just ready. I want out. I want to do this. I want to do this. And a friend of mine said, what did you ask God? I'm like, no, I don't want to because I know he'll say no. Well, I did that. I'll never forget. It was around Christmas time. I'm laying in my bed. And I'm just going, oh, I'm going to ask. All right, Holy Spirit, can I quit now? Yes or no? No. Oh! Okay, I had a little temper tantrum. But you know what? It was three months later. It was in March. And in those three months, I... I made bonus money that really was ridiculously crazy why I even got the money in those three months. Well, he knew, he saw, he was preparing. I don't see that. In my flesh, I was done, I went out, I want to get going, I want to get moving. 
trust him. He loves you. He doesn't want you to fail. He has good things for you. He's not going to say, yeah, I want you to do that, Karen, and then ha, 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 you blew it. That's not what I meant. That's not God. We as believers have to get a hold of that because the world needs to see something different. Larry, you love Jesus. You're serving him. You're going to run into people that are going to look at you and go, you're not feeling too well. You're, why are you so joyful? Because I love Jesus and he's got a plan for my life and I'm whole and I'm healed. What is going to show the world more about his love as we focus on the promise? So we're going to skip, I think, the next slide. Oh, this is about the whole, this is John, but I telling you, you can actually go to verse 4 because this is probably my favorite, favorite, one of my favorite verses. Keep going. What? We're doing the old-fashioned way, aren't we? Verse 4. I think it's again. Okay, anyway, I'm just going to read it. Are you ready? Are you there? Are you ready? So exciting. Hold on to your seats. Remember, the Lord had said to Abram, leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. And then he had the promises. In verse 4, what did Abram do? What? Doesn't that excite you? Is this just me? I can't remember when, but years ago, I'm like, I want the faith of Abraham. Wow. God said, go. He went. I'm sorry. I think that's way cool. He didn't say, well, God, where? What are we going to do? How are we going to get there? Am I going to like being there? Well, God, before we do that, here, let me go call my friends and see what they think. Just go. Because, you know, our friends, we love our friends. And some, you do need to have a, a counsel around you. I believe in that, and I believe in accountability. But we all have some friends that if you say, hey, I think I'm supposed to go to Disney, they'll go, yeah, go to Disney. Hey, I think I'm supposed to go to Africa. Yeah, go to Africa. They love us so much, they'll just go wherever, say whatever we think. Hey, God said I should do this. Oh, yeah, go do this. Hey, God said, uh, you know, be wise. Be wise. But isn't that exciting? I'm still excited about that. Because if I had time to tell you where God has brought me from and where he has me now in the faith and how he did it, has it been easy? No. Would I do it all again? Yes. Because I, I, I've seen him. He had me in a place for five years that I'm like, really, Lord, I'm reading your word. This doesn't sound like you. Really, Lord, this really stinks. And you've got Christians going, well, why is God doing this for you? I don't know. But, you know, in those five years, that darkness, that struggle, that, you know, I learned how to pray. I learned how to press in. I saw him move. I saw him pay for things. I don't know how he paid. I never missed a beat in anything. I learned to trust him because the promise he's given you, the dream he's given you, no matter how big you think it is, it's going to start here because he's preparing you for what it is he has for you. If he would have told me 20 years ago I'd be standing here in front of you guys, I'd say, yeah, right, see ya. No way, no how am I doing any kind of public speaking? No. No. And it's little step. Again, the baby in the natural, little steps, little growth. You don't give them steak, six months old, do you? Maybe some of you did, but <laughs> it's no different spiritually. We look at other people like, well, how come I can't be like him? How come I can't be like her? Because number one, you're not him or her. And number two, he has something very specific for you that he's preparing you for. And we have to believe, believe. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. I think I'm going to go to my last slide. Because I really could just like go on and on and on forever, but I've sat where you've sat before. 
<laughs> Being real, okay? Sorry. If we can get to the last slide. Oh, I can look it up in my Bible. Actually, if you want to go there, it's Matthew 7. He is just so good. He is just so good. He is just so good. He's just so good. And he's doing something right now in my life. I'm just blown away. I'm just totally blown away. I had something a couple of weeks ago, and, you know, I wanted to try to put it together. And, oh, well, God, you know, this is not really fair. And, and let me write. And, you know, I kind of worked on it a little bit. And he, and then I, I put a part two to it. And I said, well, God, I, I think you're telling me to leave it be, but I'm not really sure if that's you. And, I, you know, we need to stick up for ourselves sometimes. So I put, like, a part B to it. And he came back. And he did, did more that I could ask, think, or imagine. Even though I put out what I thought would be fair, he did more. I could have messed it up, but he knew my heart. I was trying to be, you know, God, I want to be obedient here if you're telling me to do this. And I just, I was driving when I got the news, and uh, tears, it just, of course, the person I'm talking to, I don't know if, if they walk with the Lord or what their thing is, but I'm like, I can almost cry. And she's like, she can almost cry. Probably chuckled at me. But it was the goodness of God. The goodness of God. Taste and see that he is good. And I agree with that song. Jesus loves me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. Oh, he's so good. Okay, Matthew 7, 24, 26. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Hear his words, put them into practice. You can leave here today and still kind of focus on whatever you're dealing with, the problem. Say, oh, that's nice, nice worship, nice word. But I'm still going to deal with this. Or you can leave here and say, you know what? I'm going to get out my phone. I'm going to go to my computer. I'm going to Google. And I'm going to get his promise. I'm going to get his word. Put his word into practice. Take him at his word. God, you said, and I believe you. God, I trust you because you said. God said, let there be light. Need I say more? Why is it important? Because the rain, Jesus said, you're going to have trouble in this world. Amen? There are trials and tribulations. Rejoice. Try anyway. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. We're going to get it. Sometimes from the enemy, sometimes from ourselves. It's going to come. And we see it in our world and what we're living in. It's going to come, and a lot of it's here. But it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. Church, God is calling us to get into his word, to know his truth, and to stand on it because we have to be the hope in the world that is hopeless. And if we get, oh, my toe hurts, what are we going to do? How are we going to be showing them what to do or how to do it? Our roots have to go deep like a tree in the storms and the hurricane. You might bend a little bit, but you're not breaking. Or, and you have a choice. He gives us a choice. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. I've been at the beach a few years ago. I discovered, you know, you can um, take sand, a little water, and you like kind of like, I don't know what you call it, whatever this is. You build it, and it kind of bit. They're actually kind of cool. Last night, people looked at me like I was nuts. They'd never done it. So I encourage you, go to the beach Put a little water with the sand and make like a little ball. And you can build like a little sand castle. It's way cool. It's just fun. A little drip. Okay, too much. I lead a sheltered life, don't I? But what it, think about it. When I thought, think about that building your house, it takes very little water for that thing to fall down. Because that would come this little bitty wave. I'm like, really? I love that. It took me half hour to make that. Amen. Still sad. Okay. So when the rain came, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. So the word of the Lord today is, 
Which side are you on? What choice are you going to make? You want to build your house on a foundation so it will withstand no matter whatever comes your way? No matter what you're believing for, you will stand? Does it mean that there are going to be things that happen in our life that we don't understand? Oh, absolutely. I can sit here and and tell you things that have happened and people that I've watched and what they've gone through. I'm like, what, Lord? Things that make no sense. But I trust him because I don't see what he sees. So it's not for me to question what's happening around in other people. It is up for me to, up to me to stand on his word and his truth and to believe him and to trust him. And we need to stand and encourage each other through this. But I don't want to build my house on sand. I don't want to fall over when a wave comes. I might sway a little bit. I might lay down a little bit. But you know what? I will get up. I will get up. Let's close your eyes and bow your head. It's very simple. It is so simple. So simple. And we do not need to complicate it. We just need to make the choice. First and foremost, I will always, we will always in this church ask if there's anybody here that has never asked Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior. I want to make sure everybody in here, if anything were to happen, that you have the assurance that you would go to heaven if you were to die today. Is there anybody here that has never said, Jesus, I trust you, and I want to live for you? If you've never asked them into your heart, into your life, I want you to raise your hand. Is there anybody? Okay. The second thing for all of us, If there's anybody here that wants to stand with me as we go into prayer and say, God, by your spirit, I want you to give me a hunger and a thirst for your word. By your spirit, I want a revelation and an understanding of who you are and the love that you have for me. By your spirit, I want to walk in everything that you have for me. So if you want to stand as I go into prayer and believe and ask him for that, stand with me now. Lord, across the room, and even those that are online, we encourage to stand. We are standing before you with humble hearts, saying, Lord, there are things we don't understand. There are things even we don't know what to do. But what we do know is you are the author and the finisher of our faith. We do know that you are the God who loves us, who created us, and has a purpose and a plan for us. So we stand here surrendered before you. Lord, I ask by your spirit in each one of us, you put a hunger and thirst in our heart for your word, for your truth. You make it come alive. Holy Spirit, we ask for revelation, understanding of the love that you have for us. And Holy Spirit, for those who are like, holy what? We ask that you just give each of us a new revelation of who you are in our life, how you are there to comfort us. You are there to lead us. You are there to teach us. And then, Lord, I just speak a blessing over each person here. I just ask that you continue to fill them. You strengthen them. You meet every need. Those that are looking for a job, we thank you for the position that you're giving them. Those that are thanking you for healing, we stand in agreement. We say thank you for that healing. Lord, we thank you in the um, natural We're going to see the manifestation of all these things that we know are already done in the supernatural. So, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you that we could come here and be in your house. We thank you for the worship. We thank you for the word. We thank you for you. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace. Jesus, it truly, truly is all about you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You are good. You are good. Now, I'm, I'm going to ask if everybody will please sit down. We just need five minutes. We had so much going on that um, I want to ask Ken and Paula, please, to come up and forgive me. Forgive me. Okay, well, get over it. That's real love. Why don't all the small groups come up, uh, the connect groups, come on up, all the leaders. 
Uh, we like to do this because, and I will not take much time at all. This will take literally like five minutes. So just hold on. Uh, I, we like to do this because we like to just put a face to each and every group. So you know all of the connect groups that are going on currently at New Hope Church, okay? So what we're going to do is they're just going to give you a quick synopsis of each of their groups. We're going to start with Kathy. I told you you Did we first. start the other end? <laughs> Hi. Hi. Happy Sunday. Okay, Thursday morning at 10 o'clock. Thursday night at 7 o'clock, I do a small group study with ladies. We're starting the book of Ezekiel. Don't be afraid. Okay? It's easy. It's not bad. It's not all tough. But I encourage you to come. The, the morning group at 10 meets in the cafe. The nighttime group meets at 7 at my house. My house is better. I have snacks there. But it's, it's just any, any ladies who want to just come Learn, bring your Bible. There's no book, no extra expense, none of that stuff. Just come and check us out. You'll have a good time. I'm Judith, and we have a ladies' luncheon. Thank you. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. (laughs) It's the first uh, Tuesday of the month. We're going to be starting October 2nd. It's at 1 o'clock at Tiffany's. It's a time for the ladies to get together and fellowship and just get to know one another. Sometimes at church, we are so busy saying hi and chit-chatting with other people. We really don't get to know each other. So this is just an opportunity for us to fellowship together. (laughs) Hi, my name is Perry Gousset, and this is my wife, Kathy. Our group is called To Share Life. Well, a few years ago, we went to the Dave Ramsey program of financial peace. And before that, I could never imagine what it might be like to have little or no debt. But after attending, we went from having three quarters of a million dollars in debt to right now we owe less than 50000 So my question to you is, can you imagine what it would be like to have no debt? To have no house payment, no car payments, no credit cards. Can you imagine what it would be like to this house of God for every person here to be able to not only tithe, but to give more every time there was a call. Can you only imagine? I can, and if you can imagine, come join us and we'll help show you how. And we're gonna be in the conference room on Tuesday and it starts September 25th. Have a great day. (laughs) 6.30 to 8.30. I'm Belinda, and I have a small group on Mondays. Um, We're starting a new Beth Moore study. It's called The Quest. It is a six-week study, but we're going to intermingle some um, fun times in uh, as well. Uh, We meet, so Mondays at Innisbrook from 7 to 9. And, yeah, there you go. (laughs) I'm Kathy, and our group is Dream Big. Um, We meet in the cafe Uh, the first and third Tuesday of every month um, from 5.30 to 7. Um, It's an interactive, topical word study. Um, We're doing the fruits of the Spirit. Welcome. I've got that question. Anyone can come. Um, I am Tina Shade, and we are uh, called Lift Ladies in Faith Together, which we, I think we should change it to Ladies in Fun Together, because the purpose of our group is really to get the ladies in the church together uh, once a month. We're going to start in December with a Christmas lunch um, to just get together and have fun. We're going to have different activities every month, so keep an eye on, out uh, in the bulletin for what we schedule. And it really is to every lady so that we can get together and really know each other on a more personal level. Um, I was thinking this morning is that, you know, on Sundays you have the people that come in and they sit on the left side and the people that come in that only sit on the right side. And we very 
not frequently mix, um, had the opportunity to mix. And I remember our first bowling group that we got together with the ladies, I got to meet Liz. And I'm like, I've never really seen you. And she's always oh, sit on this side. And I'm like, oh, well, I always sit on this side. <laughs> so it was a great opportunity for us to get to know each other. Now she's a wonderful friend and we are going to the DR together. So I was thinking back about that and how we might not have ever had that opportunity to get to know each other really well. Um, so I encourage every lady to, if you, something, the first thing that we plan isn't in your wheelhouse, to keep an eye on the bulletin for the next thing. So there'll be something that you will find interesting and you'll be able to enjoy it. Thank you. Yeah, my name is Eddie. I just love being here and helping and serving and helping everybody out. And I'm praying for every, each and every person in here and uh, pray for my family. They need healing too. Bye. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm Steve Meeker, uh, men's group, men's group, 7 o'clock every Monday night, except for this Monday, not this Monday because of the holiday, but every Monday night, not this Monday, Jeff, not this Monday, every Monday night, 7 o'clock, 7, 8, 30, uh, we've got a group of guys in there, uh, right now we're studying Nehemiah, uh, like Nehemiah, he's the guy that rebuilt the wall, well, we rebuild each other's lives, it's about building lives, right, building yourself up in Christ again and then reaching out to others and helping them, what brings glory to God, you know, an alcoholic that doesn't drink anymore. And people can see, and wow, look at that guy. You know, look, look where he came from, look where he's going to. Uh, some of us never went down that far, but we're all somewhere moving our way up. And really for the men, it's a lot harder because, uh, you know, we don't socialize very well, I don't think. Uh, so ladies, push your guys. Mondays, 7 o'clock. I'm sick of chasing them around all over the, the place, all right? Uh, Send them over there. Seven o'clock at the uh, what building we're in? The youth building, all right? Seven o'clock. Thank you. Hi, my name is Tom Mitchells. My wife, Lori, we um, have Wednesday night word in the cafe, seven o'clock every Wednesday. And you kind of think about things, but what are you going to say that's uh, going to be relevant or pertinent? It's we exposit the word book by book, chapter by chapter, verse by verse. And some of the scriptures that uh, I'm mindful of is James 3, 1 says, Not many should presume to be teachers, nor will we judge a little bit more strictly. And Ephesians 4 talks about, you know, the gifts of the church, teachers being to edify and to equip the saints. And, and I'm mi mindful of the time of everyone. I mean, we've got 168 hours a week. We run a business where I'm seeing 15 to 25 patients every day. And time is more valuable to me than money, to be quite frank. But here's, here's what I'm going to do for you and just something to think about. And hopefully this isn't taken in the wrong way. I'm going to give you six to ten hours of my time every week in preparation to teach you. For, I'm going to exchange that for one hour of your time. And that's about the best deal I can make you. I mean, you're going to come because you want to or not. But what I'm saying is I'm going to give up six to ten hours of my time. And I can monetize that, believe me. But I'm going to trade you six to ten hours of my time for one hour of your one hour of yours. And if you come a couple of Wednesday nights, it's just not for you. Well, that's okay. You don't, there's plenty of classes to attend, and hopefully you can attend as many as you can. But I do make that offer to you. I'm, I don't. This is not a hobby for me. I don't look for a participation award. I look to edify and equip, to challenge you, to make you think, to own this, own this, own this. Because if I get run over by a herd of buffalo tomorrow. At the end of the day, when Tom's long gone, I want to have helped build something bigger than ourselves. You need to own this so you can share this and be better people for it. Thank you so much. Hope to see you on Wednesday. Kenny and I run an alternate Friday night meeting. It's called Dinner and Bible Discussion, and basically that's all it is. We have dinner at 6.30. <laughs> And then we have a Bible discussion right after that. We have a wonderful time. We get into the Word. We discuss different things that God has showed us. And then we have dessert. It's wonderful. Very casual. Come out and join us. Thank you. So how many, how many here right now attend one of these groups? Raise your hand. Wow. See, it's a lot of groups. A lot of people. There's a couple of holdouts. So that's who we're after today. And actually, people have already signed up. Amen? There's been people signing up. So I appreciate that. Uh, enjoy. I think there's like ribs and there's chili and there's sandwiches. It's like you don't even have to go to lunch. So enjoy. Stop. Talk to one of these. Anything that might have piqued your interest, talk to one of them. There's brochures. If you don't have time today, just take a brochure. 
okay? And then call one of the, the, the information for each leader is on that card. You can call them when you have some time to discuss it more. Also, if someone is interested in starting a group, you can talk to me and Paula, and we will help you through the process of getting that going. All righty? So we thank you for your time. We, we just wish you a blessing. God bless you all. I just a special thank you to Ken and Paula for all that they do. Um, I'm going to actually take 30 more seconds because there's something that Pastor Barry wants to share that we're doing today. Um, yeah. um, just real quick, everybody that's moving out, um, real quick. As you know, our pastor's been sick for three weeks now. He's been in and out of the hospital. He's home right now recovering. Pastor's probably watching right now. Um, my wife, Tracy, came over in the Bahamas, has been sick for a month now. Um, and God just, I mean, the enemy's just taking her voice, and that's what she does. She leads worship. Um, we want to call the church to, to fast dinner tonight, dinner tonight, and to pray for, the, for uh, healing in our pastors and our leadership. Amen. And so just take tonight, if you had plans to do whatever, just set that aside. And then also at 6 o'clock on the church Facebook page, we're going to do a live stream. I'm going to do it from my house, and we're just going to have a, a half hour or so prayer meeting and just enter into a time of prayer together and believe that God's going to move. We know, we know that we, we need to pray for healing for, for Larry. We need to pray for the Bowmans. Both Bob and Sandy Bowman are both in the hospital right now at, at Meese Countryside. So we need to be just praying that God will just move and that, you know, Jesus himself said some things don't come out, but with what? Prayer and fasting. So let's pray and enter in tonight. Just fast dinner with us and pray for healing in the, in the body. Amen? Thank you.